All right, this video concerns the photoelectric effect, specifically Millikan's apparatus. Um, Millikan built this apparatus um, when the photoelectric effect was discovered in order to investigate um, the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons emitted when light hits the cathode of metal. So you want to know the the maximum. You want to know the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons being emitted, and so he built this device. Okay, so how does it work? So we have a vacuum tube shown here. Make sure that the electrons don't run into air molecules when they're being emitted. We have a cathode and an anode. Here we have an ammeter that will measure the current and a voltmeter which will help us measure the um, energy of the electrons and we'll talk about that in a minute. So when light comes in it hits the metal in the cathode and electrons are emitted into the vacuum chamber. If, uh, if there's enough energy, these electrons will make it to the anode and if light continues to shine on the cathode, say another ray of light comes in and hits the cathode, more and more electrons will be emitted and flow across this vacuum tube to cause a current through this device. Okay. Now, in order to be able to measure the um, energy of these electrons flying across this chamber, what Millikan did is he installed this variable power supply here at the bottom. And what this variable power supply does, if you'll notice that the positive end is hooked to the cathode side of the device and the negative end is hooked to the anode side of the device which is opposite of what you would expect, right? Normally the positive goes to the cathode the positive would go the other way around. Okay, so the effect of this is when you turn up this variable power supply this cathode will become more and more positive more and more positive, so it'll build up positive charge and then Eventually, when this side becomes positive enough that the energy that the electrons have that are flying across the chamber, they can no longer overcome the, the charge of this cathode. So they start to pull back. And when the electrons no longer fly across the chamber, the, this amp meter here will read zero amps. And this, when this happens, you found the stopping potential, or reverse potential, reverse potential, or stopping potential. You can call it either thing. I think on the IB test, they'll call it the stopping potential, though. meaning that all the electrons that were causing a current in this wire are now being stopped or reversed to not make it to the anode. They stay at the cathode. Okay, and then when you've done this, you'll be able to measure a voltage on this voltmeter here. And this voltage is important. So this voltage, we'll call it V sub S for V stopping, the voltage of the stopping can be used to calculate the energy of the electron. So remember that if I take a voltage and I multiply it by a charge, I can get energy, I, the energy of that, I, whatever I'm calculating. So if I take the voltage of the stopping potential and I multiply it by the charge of an electron, I can find the energy that I'm dealing with, or the kinetic energy of the electron. So what they found when they plotted the kinetic energy of the electrons with increasing frequencies of light, they found that if you emit lower frequencies of light, you don't emit any electrons until you get to a specific point, which they called the threshold frequency, threshold frequency, or it might be called 
the cutoff frequency. And then once you reach this threshold frequency, um, it'll increase linearly with more and more kinetic energy. The electrons will be emitted continuously, with, or uh, linearly with more and more kinetic energy. And uh, just another note, we'll call this um, this frequency here, we'll call it F0 uh, for the threshold frequency. So what can we do with this uh, kind of graph? Well, we're going to do a few things. Let's start with extrapolating this line to the y-axis. So if we extrapolate this line to the y-axis, we see that where it intercepts the y-axis, we get some amount of energy that is basically the minimum amount of energy that it's going to take to emit a photoelectron, right? And we call this minimum amount of energy that is required to emit a photoelectron the work function. We represent it with a symbol like this. And the work function is the minimum amount of energy a photon incident on the surface of metal is required to cause the emission of a photoelectron. So when it's the minimum amount of energy a photon needs in order to be absorbed and cause a pho photoelectron to be emitted. Okay? Now different materials have different um, work functions. Some ha are more likely to some emit um, at a lower uh, amount of light frequency, whereas some take a lot more energetic light in order to cause it to be um, emitted. And the work function is always the y-intercept of these graphs like this. Alright? So we have this work function. So we can do a little bit more math now that we have this value. So we can say that the energy of this photon, which Einstein told us, oh no, Einstein told us was equal to Planck's constant, which is, if you don't know, it's 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. Um, Planck's constant times frequency is equal to the energy of the photon. So we have the energy of the photon. And we know that the energy of the photon is equal to this amount of work that it took to cause the photoelectron emission, so is equal to the work function, plus the amount of kinetic energy the electron has at whatever point up here. So. Alright. Okay. So now that we have this equation, we can manipulate it further, because remember that we knew that the energy of a, the kinetic energy of the photoelectron is equal to the charge of an electron times the stopping potential. Okay, so we can manipulate it like that, and we can further manipulate it because we know that the work function is equal to Planck's constant times the threshold frequency. And we know that because we know that the energy of a photon that would barely get the electron to um, this point here would be equal to this frequency times h. Okay? And since we have our equation in this form, we can say h is equal to hf minus hf naught plus e oops, I'm sorry, I wanted to say equals is equal to charge of the electron times our stopping potential. And the more I work on this, the closer I get to having this in y equals mx plus b form of a line. 
and we see that if we change this back into stopping potential I'm sorry and if we change this point back into kinetic energy of an electron we see that this is y equals mx plus b format and we see that Planck's constant is our slope so that's the other cool thing about these graphs is that the slope of this line here is Planck's constant.